I'm that close to convince myself that I have to upgrade my old 4080, very old 4080, to a brand new 5090. There's just this tiny, teeny little problem. And what I'm talking about is money. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. So money is a problem, always, okay? The pure amount of money what you have to pay for a 5090 or even a 4090 here in Australia is just ridiculous. So Nvidia announced the price for the 5090 a couple of days ago and um, or weeks ago, and we're talking about 4,000 Australian dollars. So that's for the Founders Edition. That's not for any partner cards from ASUS, Gigabyte or whatever, okay? Those cards most likely are even a little bit more expensive, okay? So right now for 4090, you should pay, well, you have to pay around, yeah, 3,500 to $4,000, depending on what model, what type, or partner card, or brand you actually like. This is a lot of money, and now we're even talking about more money. So I'm not expecting actually that, the 5090 ASUS TUF, what I would like to have is going to have, or I'm getting this for under $4,000. So in the worst case, we're talking about $4,200, $4,300, something like that. I hope, of course, it will be around $4,000, but this is just ridiculous because $4,000 Australian dollars, I paid for my first car when I moved to Australia, 5,000 Australian dollars, okay? And now I'm talking about what well, I'm trying to convince myself to get a GPU, just a GPU for $4,000. That's actually, if you just think about that, it's stupid. But because I'm not stupid and I'm very smart, I try to convince myself that this is actually some sort of business expense for my YouTube channel. Even it will never work out. But hey, let's just keep this in mind, okay? Okay, let's talk about something else because money is money and performance is performance. So let's talk about performance and what we actually, or what can we actually expect when we're going to upgrade, let's say from a 4090 to a 5090. And I'd like to share with you a couple of charts provided by NVIDIA and also provided by computerbase.de, German website, which I'm visiting very regularly because they're doing actually great work when it comes to PC hardware. So what we learned so far from the yeah, latest updates actually, we are talking about a raw performance gain up to and just up to 33% coming from a 4090 to a 5090. And that's the raw performance up to, okay, up to 33% and maybe just up to 30%, whatever. Because we need to be a little bit careful because all the information right now is provided by NVIDIA. We haven't seen any, or at least I'm not aware of, but we haven't seen any test outside from NVIDIA's. Okay, so anyway. 33% um, raw performance doesn't sound much. So for me, of course, it's a little bit different because I'm coming from a 4080, so the performance gain will be higher just looking at raw performance. What I'd like to talk about a little bit more in detail is actually DLSS4, which we also getting, thanks God, on the 40 series cards, which is fantastic. Thank you, Nvidia, or maybe not thank you, so because we should and actually we should get this 4040 series card anyway but what i like to talk about is frame generation multi frame generation because this is something where i still try to to spin my head around um, how this actually works and how good would it be on a 50 90 at the end. So let's take a closer look on this chart, which was provided by NVIDIA for or at the CES 2025. So just a couple of days ago, actually. And what we can see here is we have apparently a 5090 card in use, full ray tracing effects and stuff like that, and 4K resolution. And with DLSS off, we're talking about 27 frames per second. But this is actually not the number I'm looking for. I like to focus a little bit more on PC latency. And in this case, we're talking about 65 milliseconds latency 
And as soon we turning on DLSS, the frame rate jumps up to 71. But again, that's not the number I'm looking for. PC latency is very important because this is reduced by a lot, actually half, let's say half, down to 33 milliseconds. So this is very important. So in my opinion, PC latency is actually more important than frames per seconds because if you have a very high latency and also very high frames per seconds, the game doesn't feel smooth, okay? So I have rather actually just 60 FPS and a perfect PC latency rather than having, let's say, 500 FPS and 100 milliseconds latency. And of course, I understand how we can get a much higher frame rate with DLSS 2 compared to DLSS off because yeah, now we actually rendering internally with a much lower resolution compared to DLSS off and therefore we're getting a higher frame rate and a lower latency. But I still struggle to understand that when we now looking at DLSS 4 with multi frame generation and let's just have a look at the number 246 FPS. But again, that's not the number I'm looking for. Look at the PC latency. 35 milliseconds. So comparing this with DLSS 2, there's almost no difference in regards of latency. So just two milliseconds, that's nothing. How does this work? Is the new technology really that good that we're not losing anything in latency? The good news is that we're getting DLSS 4 for the 40 cars as well. That means we will see a performance increase for the older cards as well and also some nice um, yeah, improvement in terms of VRAM usage. Okay, But the real interesting thing here is multi-frame generation. I mean, don't get me wrong, this TV here in the back can do 144 hertz. That means I just need 144 frames per second to be very happy. But of course, I like this. Yeah, I like to have 144 frames per second with full ray tracing and full pass tracing because that's nowadays how you enjoy your PC games. So that's when you most likely need multi-frame generation. And again, if we are not losing any latency, any any, or we have no disadvantage, no downgrade in how the game feels, we're just gaining actually more fake frames. But to be very honest, I don't care if those frames are fake as long as they're feeling real. And looking at this chart, it appears to me because again, we're talking about a much lower latency compared to the yeah, native 4K resolution. That means the game feels already much, much better. Of course, it would be even better if we would have a better raw performance, but that's not what we're getting here at the moment. So this is just, in my opinion, mind blowing. Multi-frame generation is, I can't wait actually to test it. Okay, my friends, so I think you can hear actually that I'm really excited for this um, new GPUs. It's just the price is ridiculous. But to be very honest, that's, that's how it is, unfortunately. We can't do anything. The only decision what we have is we don't buy or we buy, okay? But then if you buy, don't complain about the price. So I'm complaining about the price because I don't know. <laughs> anyway, because it's so much money and I still don't know how to convince my wife actually or to explain to her why this little thing cost 4,000. I, I have no idea. I better not tell her. I, I don't know. Maybe I need to. I don't know. Because maybe any any advice, any advice, put in the comment section because this is really important. Anyway, so um, the problem is that the same as with the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5 Pro, big step up in terms of price. And I told you already, I'm not happy about the price. I still think PlayStation 5 Pro is overpriced, but the problem is, well, it's the same reason what we see, what we can see with the PlayStation 5. Um, we have not really a competition. Nvidia doesn't have really a competition in this high-end market because AMD, as good as they are with their GPU range, but they are not catching up to the high, high, high end range what Nvidia is targeting with the 5090 or even maybe with the 5080. I mean, don't get me wrong, the uh, AMD graphic cards are really, really good. And if, if I would just game on my PC, 
and I wouldn't do any content creation, any editing, any whatever, any streaming, I would fully go AMD. But because NVIDIA has so much great tools and so much, the hardware is just unbelievable. That's how it is. That's why I chose NVIDIA for the GPU. Complete different um, compared to my PC CPU because I always go actually with AMD. Uh, anyway, this is just because, you know, if AMD would have in the same category or level, on the same level, a, a graphic card, then we would probably see a little bit of a different price range or maybe a price battle. But that's not the case. So that's why NVIDIA can ask those ridiculous prices. And it's, again, over 4,000 Australian dollars here for sure for the Asus TUF GPU, what I like to have. Okay. Um, I don't know how to, again, tell my wife that I like to spend so much money just on a piece of hardware which which I don't need okay I don't need this because I have a 4080 I just want it